fifth year, I think it's fifth year mm -hmm. specialty registrar in paediatrics. She's working in Winchester at the moment, and Winchester has a link with Yay, which is a, a hospital in South Sudan. And Abby's been out there and is going to tell us a little bit about her experiences. Thank you, Abby. Thank you. I'm trying not to plunge us too much into darkness, but I'm assured. Ooh, there we go. Um, so, thank you, John. Um, so, I'm going to speak about our, our link with Yay in South Sudan. South Sudan is the world's youngest country. After decades of civil war, it finally achieved independence from Sudan uh, after a referendum in July 2011. And following this, there's been further unrest in December 2013. These political factors combined with um, a, a limited infrastructure and limited resources mean that there are significant problems in the supply of um, health staffing and health provision in the country. Ye is a medium-sized city in the southwest of the country, very close to the border, as you see, um, with the, Demo the Democratic Republic of Congo and Uganda. There's a significant uh, refugee population, and the census that was done in 2011 estimated the population as 185,000 people. Despite this, Ye is served only by one hospital, which is currently staffed between three and six doctors, variable um, depending on when you catch them, um, and a number of nurses, clinical officers, a pharmacist, uh, lab technicians and an x-ray technician. And the hospital um, consists of a compound of a number of buildings which consist of wards, there's a, a combined outpatient and laboratory department, there's a pharmacy, um, there's an x-ray part, there's a maternity ward with a, a theatre and there's a new surgical block. But conditions in the hospital are, are difficult, there are limited resources and there are often significant delays in the supplies from the central government. The town is also served by a number of primary healthcare clinics which are both run for profit and run by different NGOs. And our link since its inception has um, had significant support from the Brickworks charity which runs a primary healthcare clinic called the Martha Health Clinic which has an outpatient department, a small lab and pharmacy an eye ward and, as you can see on the right there, a beautiful brand spanking new paediatric ward. Our link was established in 2010 and since then a number of UK teams have uh, gone out for short trips um, and, and visits to, to work in, in the hospital and also in the primary healthcare clinics. And those links have comprised of a number of different uh, individuals including nurses and doctors and physios and midwives but also engineers and laboratory technicians and managers. Each of our trips has had a, a key theme or specialty agreed in advance in collaboration with our colleagues in Ye in South Sudan. But maternity and child health continue to be strong, continuing themes. So these are uh, some of the, the key aspects of health we find when we visit. I'll talk in a little bit more detail about our work with training and education and equipment maintenance later. But to give you a flavour of what we've been doing with data collection, over the last few years we've been collecting data about paediatric malnutrition, both in the hospital and the primary healthcare clinic we're attached to. We've been able to present that data locally at the Wessex Paediatric Meeting and we've been able to publish that in the South Sudan Medical Journal. Having done that, we've been able to advocate via UNICEF for an increased supply of uh, therapeutic foods um, and other necessary equipment to work with paediatric nutrition in the area. Now for two years the link received funds from the Tropical Health and Education Trust and we have also been fortunate in having significant financial and organisational support from the Brickworks charity. But unfortunately the FET grant is now over and one of our key challenges as a link has been encouraging fundraising activity to keep a, a steady flow of income. In discussion with our colleagues in Ye, our successes, which is always nice to talk about. Um, so we feel that key successes that we have achieved in our work have been in the fields of training and education and in the fields of equipment, maintenance and supply. So teaching has taken on a variety of forms, both planned and ad hoc, both hands-on and theoretical. And one of the great successes we feel is the sustained and uh, repeated teaching of neonatal resuscitation. So you can see um, a local midwife, Hannah, um, teaching a midwife and a student midwife. And we've repeatedly taught the principles of neonatal resuscitation to midwives, to student midwives, and even the cleaner on the maternity unit. 
Um, and as we go back, we see the success of that, both in their kind of continued knowledge in the theory of it, practicing on a dummy and having the, the prompts on the maternity ward, but seeing that translated into real life situations. As well as that, we've been uh, giving lectures to midwifery and uh, nursing students. We've had some focused family planning teaching. We've taught the entire staff of Martha Clinic about the principles of paediatric nutrition. And we've been uh, taking part in joint learning ward rounds where we learn from our colleagues um, in South Sudan and they learn from us on, in the hospital. In response to uh, what we've heard from our South Sudanese partners, we have been sourcing and donating various large and small parts of equipment. So we've had a, a new maternity bed, we uh, had a new pump for the hospital water supply, we've had sinks in the wards, we've had MUAC tapes, we've had SAT probes, we've had thermometers. We've also been able to renovate the hospital accommodation, which is um, uh, called a Tuchel, as uh, a small hut, and that has been providing accommodation both for link trips, but also for visiting hospital guests. And particularly um, popular members of our team are the, are the fixers, those with the engineering or mechanical background who've worked with hospital maintenance staff, including the redoubtable Moses, who wears amazingly massive wellies in 40 degree heat, I don't know how he does it, um, in fixing key parts of the hospital plumbing and electricity supplies and working and fixing key parts of equipment like the x-ray machine and other parts that the hospital can't do without. The challenges that we in the link have faced have been varied. The staff in the Yale Civil Hospital face an unrelentingly uh, massive workload and they often wait for several months for their, their wages from the central government. You can understand why they become demoralised and are unwilling uh, at times to add to their already massive workload. So occasionally we find that things that we think are important and have been teaching a lot, for example, um, paediatric observations on the ward, are things that just aren't sustainable with, with the workload that people are finding. Secondly, um, although people are always keen to be taught when they're there, the timing of <coughs> student uh, life has occasionally meant that exams have been taking place whilst link visits are there. So although we would like to teach and they'd like to learn, they're in the middle of a period when they're not available for learning. In a similar way, key people on the teams have occasionally have to readjust their roles in the, in the trip because of the lack of availability of necessary resources. So you see some um, beautiful photos from one of our colleagues, Tom, who's a photographer, of the functioning uh, operating theatre and then an empty surgical ward. So between those two photos, a new surgical theatre had been built, which was very necessary and important. But unfortunately, the money hasn't been paid to the builders, and so it hasn't been opened. And therefore, there's no operating theatre there at the moment. So our consultant orthopaedic surgeon who was visiting had to redirect his plan to teaching at that time. <coughs> You might ask, what is a terrible present? <laughs> and um, that has become a key phrase for us in our link. So in the hospital, in, um, in hospital compound, there's a large shipping container which contains many well-meaning um, but entirely useless donations. So there's hundreds of tracheostomy tubes, there's giant incubators, there's electrical equipment with the wrong electrical voltage. The shipping container is covered with goats, and the donations are covered with dust. And we, in our link, desperately want to avoid adding to that pile. And the final major challenge has been with communication. It's always difficult um, on the ground when you're communicating with patients in a different language, but more than that, the uh, sustained communication in planning for the work of the link, in keeping in dialogue with our colleagues so that we are doing what the South Sudanese doctors and nurses and people want us to do rather than what we want to do has been a challenge. Despite all this challenge, we continue to be excited about future work with our link. Um, so most recently, we've been working on equipment and training for a blood bank for the hospital. Um, there is no blood bank there currently. Um, this week, we are buying a solar powered fridge, which is the key piece of equipment needed. And that will be shipped out to Ye for May, when a small team of lab, lab technicians will be going out to facilitate training to facilitate systems planning and to start getting that in place. In addition, uh, next year two of our LINK members, myself and my husband, are going out for nine months to Yale 
to work more with the doctors there and to um, try and facilitate the links work in a, a hands-on approach. And finally, as always, we need to raise more money <laughs> to keep the work of the link alive. Although recently, a paediatric secretary managed to raise £700 for the cake sale, so small beginnings is always helpful. We're very proud of the work that our link does, uh, of the work that we have done there and the relationships we've fostered. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abby. Um, I'm going to suggest that to facilitate people meeting each other, um, rather than have questions now, if you'd like to ask Abby some questions, you do so at the end, and then you can get the, the, the real res sort of responses that you really want. So, Abby, thank you very much. We'll move on to the next presentation, which is John Cogman. Thank you, John. Um, the temperature, by the way, uh, it seems pretty... Uh...